Julian Holland, welcome to Boxing Deep Dive, mate. Great to have you on the show. Yeah, thanks, Lyndon. Uh, good to be on here. Uh, have a little bit of a chat about our, our careers, eh? Yeah, well, mate, it's, it's hard to believe that uh, it's been so long. I mean, we probably should probably kick off with probably the, the, the big thing we've got in common, and that, that's our, our hometown, of course, both uh, Bendigo boys. Um, were you actually born in Bendigo, or you, you just live there? Yeah, yeah, I was born in Bendigo. Um, yeah. Lived there till I was about five, and then I, I moved away um, from Bendigo to uh, to Darwin, yeah. and, and then to the Gold Coast after that. But, um, you know, because of my family in Bendigo, we used to go back there every uh, Christmas and all that. So we're always there, anyway. Yeah, well, I was a little bit different. I I, uh, I wasn't born in Bendigo. I was born in a little town called Birchup up in the uh, the northern part of Victoria, but pretty much spent uh, about 40 years of my life in Bendigo. But it's amazing. Yeah. It's probably the one thing that, you know, around the same time, we're the same age, almost the same weight, and from the same well, town. It's yeah. amazing. We've got so much in common. Yeah. And, and and it's funny. I mean, we've got so much to go over with your, with your career, but it's funny. We, we actually only met, I think it was 1994, and of all places, it was in Cavill yep. Avenue on the Gold Coast. <laughs> well, I met a lot of people on Cavill Avenue. <laughs> well, well, it's yeah. funny because uh, I know I feel like I'm interviewing myself here, but it's funny because I was doing a little bit of um, security work up there at the time on Cavill Avenue. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. Yeah. I'd obviously never been to Cavill yeah, Avenue yeah. before. Yeah. And here I look up the road, and here it is, these, these, these bunch of um, hooligans coming down the road. And who was it? It was the Holland, uh, or Team Holland, it was amazing. That was the first yeah. time we ever met. And I remember we locked eyes, and, and we introduced yeah. ourselves, and uh, it's amazing how, how things come around, isn't it? Yeah, and then, you know, like, then it was, um, was that when you were sparring up there, when we started sparring? No, I'd only Sparing just, a... I'd only just got to, yeah. um, Queensland, I didn't know anyone, I'd just got the job, I reckon I'd only yeah. been there a couple of weeks, and it was just sort of almost fate that I ran into you, because you said, hey, mate, you know, yeah. great to finally meet, obviously, let's go down, and we yeah. obviously ended up in, uh, yeah. in the ring. Yeah, yeah, in the old commercial hotel, um, gee, it was a good gym back then, wasn't it, you know, like, nice. all the, um, you know, like, uh, you know, I suppose those type of gyms and, you know, it's like your gym in Bendigo with Pat Connolly, mm. you know, they just cut so many, the teeth on so many good boys, don't, you know, and you, you, you had the, you had the fight to survive in them, really, you know, mm. so you, you, you couldn't suck your way around it, you got sort of shortened up pretty quick, didn't you? Yeah, no, exactly, well, I remember the, and you're right about the gym factor because great gyms don't just pop up you know they they evolve over a long time and they don't they're not the flashiest gyms and you're right about our, our, my old gym in bendigo and obviously the rang i remember it was yeah. under the the commercial hotel it was always hot as hell in yeah. there it was sticky it was yeah. it wasn't overly big yeah. but just the amount of um guys that went through there and the sparring that we had there it was just yeah. it was unbelievable well, you know like you had from you had from jamie nicholson um you know uh, yeah. rest in peace jamie but um you know, you had him, him and he was just the, 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 the pinnacle. And then, you know, you had Brad Sewell and there was, you know, like there was um, so many good fighters. Mm. Blair and Cole Wilson were there. Yep. And, um, you know, like it was just, yeah, it was just, there was always good sparring. Mm. Danny Ballot, Queensland champion, you know. I remember so, um, um, always... Crazy, was it Gavin Top as well? He was there, I remember Gavin. Do you remember Gavin? He was more. He came up late. No, he yeah. He came up later, more to Burley. He oh, was, was more it? More to Burley. Okay. I don't think he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But he, came so... up late. he was still in Victoria. Because I, I fought Gavin when I come down to finish my apprenticeship back to Melbourne. I fought Gavin in the Victorian titles down here. So he was yeah. still with Keith Ellis then. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought because I, I just remember seeing him at the gym up up there, but. How did you um? Yeah. How did you end up at that gym, mate? I mean, obviously you, you went to. Well, firstly, how did you end up in boxing, and how did you end up at, at that gym? Well, uh, well, what happened? It was quite a funny thing. Is that uh, a good fr friend? Well, Freddie died. You know, oh, Freddie. Freddie. From Bendy. Yeah. My club, Freddie. Yeah. There. Well, he he actually um, he actually loved Fre Frankie Ropus, as you yeah. know. Yeah. And and Frankie was up there sparring, and I was eleven years old at the time. And he was up sparring a guy called Russell Johnson mm -hmm. for he was going to fight Brian Jansen in Brisbane, and so they were sparring under the at the commercial there, and we we went up and had a look, and I said to me old man, I said mate, I, I want to this is what I want to do, you know, mm -hmm. so get me down here. So that, and that's basically 
I was straight down, and I think six weeks later, I had my first fight. Is that right? Six weeks later. So yeah. you, yeah. so as I said before, we we hooked up in around '94. I think it started '95, whatever it was, yeah. and um, yeah. we trained down there. Now you were at the at that time. Uh, I was at the welterweight division. You were light welterweight, yeah. and you, um, yeah. unfortunately for you. We're in the same division as uh, Richie Rolls. I actually met Richie a bit later down the down the track, yeah. but you yeah. ran into him before yeah, yeah. me. Tell us a little bit about Richie in the uh, lead up well, to Olympic well, trials. Well, Richie, Richie was uh, yeah, he was a super fighter, wasn't he? Mm. You know, and um, you know he that he had a de- like he had a bloody good right hand, didn't he? And uh, well, great he Jimmy put me on the too, didn't he? He put me on my ass a few times. You know, <laughs> I fought him three times, Richie. Is that right? Yeah, and yeah, usually in the state titles, but um, you know, I remember one fight he dropped me in the first, and then dropped me in the second, <laughs> then I won the third. <laughs> yeah, so because yeah, so, I just um, remember at the yeah. time, uh, uh, actually, I, I don't think I was at world away at the time. I was a little bit fat up there. I was fighting a light middleweight at the time, and and you were obviously yeah, taking yeah. a bit more serious. But I just yeah. remember I ran into, oh, I'd fought Richie a couple of years before that, and like yourself, um, ended up on my ass as well. Uh, he just yeah, had this. That, that was. That was at Redcliffe, yeah. Yeah, that was Redcliffe. Was that Red- yeah. Because yeah, I fought, like, I fought like Walter. I fought um, Lee Trouse that that that. Oh, did you? Yeah. Because yeah. mm. I yeah. remember, um, yeah, I saw him the year before in Darwin, and he fought um, Danny McGrail and actually got knocked out in the first round in that, yeah, in that did, fight. Yeah. Um, I, Danny I, I, right on the chin I, I, and. I, and, yeah. and I drew him at the Nationals, and I thought, oh, well, you know, how hard is this going to be? I knew nothing about him. Obviously, he didn't know you or anyone else yeah, at the yeah. time. And um, yeah. I learnt the hard way pretty quick, because after I'd done about three yeah. three somersaults when he hit me, um, yeah. it, was, it was all over. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it was, it was just a great fight. But, mate, tell us a little bit yeah. a little bit about the amateurs back then. You were obviously close to Bomber Peden and a few of the others up there, mate. It was just a great yeah. time for, yeah, for yeah. Aussie boxing, wasn't it? Well, it was, you know. like, um, and, and even, like, from Rob, Robbie's gym... There was the light middleweight would have been, um, you know, like there was you had Rosie and Dave Nichols and the, yeah. and and you know you had well, Obar was always our team captain, and and he was just such a legend bloke um, and champion as well, winning you know all the titles he won, mm. um, you know they were, it was good times and mm. you know me and Robbie I remember going up sparring Robbie and Richie and then you know like. Um, you, w- you wouldn't get home till very late afterwards. You know, so. <laughs> I don't think much has changed with Bomber these days. Has it? You're obviously d- in no, Melbourne no, uh, now, as as he is. Do you still catch yeah, up with him at all? Yeah. Well, now well, he lives he lives that sort of um, a, a fair way from me, and I, I like yeah. it that way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he rings me occasionally as well, um, just to say good day and yeah, then check yeah. up and say oh, hello. Still, but yeah, uh, mate, still, look. I don't know about yourself, mate. I, you know, when we we always rank the the great some of the greatest fighters in Australian history, and I, I don't think he probably gets enough credit because amateur and pro, he was probably the, the best we yeah. had, the mixture of both. Well, I, I've always said, even when we we're amateurs and that, like mm. the things he used to do. I remember going away to the Oceanas, mm-hmm. and and he had like we, we were a few kilos over, and he had ten to get off, you know, <laughs> and then did it. And then knocked the bloke out in the first round. Like, yeah. just, you know, he, he did some superhuman things. Mm. Um, and it goes down, it goes, comes back to his mental strength. He's very strong in the mind. Mm. If he sets his, uh, his mind to something, he usually will do it, you know? Yeah, he was and, always... Um, a... And that's what he did when he went overseas. Yeah. yeah. He was always pretty casual, yeah, I remember. He was always he had, the best um... of us. Yeah, and he, look, he was just yeah. so casual. I yeah. suppose it was because he was so confident in his ability. And, and, and like Richie... Probably no coincidence they came from the same gym, same trainer, because they had the same sort of style and they could do yeah. the same thing to, yeah. you know, to literally see them cave people's heads in um, yeah. you know, as amateurs. And, and that was, that's a testament to old Codger, you know. Mm. Co- you know, the tra- his old man, because he, he had so many good fighters. And lo- like I fought even Robbie's brother, Troy, yeah. and, and he, he he dropped me as well, yeah. you know. I got up <laughs> one, but, you know, like they, just, they were just punches. You, yeah. you just had to be careful. Yeah. And you go in there a little bit, little bit uh, blasé. They'll they'll sit you on your ass, you know. Yeah. And um, so that yeah, that was what they knew how to do. Yeah, yeah. And, there, there and so it's many, an unusual. You know, up in Queensland, up in Queensland, there were so many good gyms like that. Yeah. You know, where yeah. you, where there, you'd go around and. There was just a lot of good fighters back then, I think. Yeah, and that was what was great for me, you know, coming from, from Bendigo. I mean, I used to obviously always go to Melbourne and spa, but it was just the scene in, in Queensland. It was just so enjoyable. I remember we used to go down to Burley yeah. and train down there and spa, and 
you know, it was just, I remember, you know, we'd go to South, uh, was it South Port and Spar with, I think it was Jeff Malcolm that trained there. And yeah, I just remember it really made me grow as a fighter because I probably hadn't had that quality sparring in the past and being around, um, you know, fighters like yourself and, and those guys in that gym and training alongside. Because as you know, good fighters push each other along and make each other better fighters. So, um, you, know, uh, you know, the, the gym we, we trained at for, for that time, just the... Uh, the amount of rounds that we did together and just how much yeah, uh, we yeah. got out of it. We, we yeah. certainly had a few wars over the years, that's for sure, wasn't it? Well, well we, we did, mate, you know, but you were, you know, and you were going for the Olympics and all, I think, you know, like I just turned pro as well, didn't yeah. I? So, yeah, um, yeah we were um, sort of on different paths, but mm. the work together were, was unreal and, and yeah. you get so much respect out of that and, mm. um, you know, uh, yeah, it was, it was good for both of us, I feel. Yeah, it was, mate. So yeah. speaking of that, mate, you turned pro in, uh, uh, was it September 95, uh, up at the Carrara Sports Complex. Yeah. I've just got your record yeah. in front of me. Yeah, yeah, me, yeah and, yeah, me first fight. And, uh, on um, the Joe Bugner undercard, which was unreal. Oh, was it? What, what fight was that? Who was he yeah. fighting? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I'm not sure who he fought that night, but it was a big night. Um, yeah. there, down, it was down the road from my house at Carrara, um, the Carrara Stadium. Yeah, uh, I can I see did, your second fight there the road, was at... You know? um, Palamon. I remember going to a couple of fight nights there over the years too, uh, Palamon's Hotel in the ring. Yeah, yeah there, were, there was a couple of big ones out the back there, weren't they? <laughs> over the port. Remember, no, wait, Cole, what, what? remember Cole Wilson yep. fought, fought Vince Servi there, yep. and then they didn't have the lights right, and, the, and, the, and then they, they got the 11th round, they had to stop the bloody That's fight. That's right, and that was actually yeah. Anzac yeah. Day 95, that was, because I remember it was the same day Collingwood oh, played Essendon. Yeah. Yep, I remember that day, and the lights went out, and that was it. <laughs> yeah. Who doesn't have lights in an outside well, boxing event? <laughs> and I think Big Cole was in front, we were blowing up. We weren't yeah. happy. Now, one fight I want to talk about there, it was about your seventh or eighth fight there, Nick Totoris. Now, I actually know Nick really yeah. well. He was a tough, tough yeah. kid, or a, a yeah, guy yeah, at the time. Yeah. He, that was a, yeah. And it ended abruptly, didn't it? It was a cut eye. Yeah, yeah, I, it was, you know, I know Nick from down here, he's a beautiful bloke, yep. um, champion guy, but, um, you know, back then, I, look, I'd, I'd sparred him beforehand, you know, like, years beforehand, and they come up from Melbourne, and they were blaring and going on, so I think they went into the fight a little bit confident, but yep. I was with Ray Giles then, and I was flying, you know, mm. and so we we were, um, we were way, way ahead in front, and yeah. Um, you know, as you know, southpaws, when you're fighting southpaws, you're mm. very su susceptible for head clashes, and yep. that's what happened, basically. I got my eye cut open, I was a mile in front, but um, mm. that's what happens, a technical draw. So Did you have a few issues like that, mate, along the journey with the, with the eyes? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I had to. I got cut probably five or six consecutive fights, yeah. basically because I was probably rushing too much, you know, yeah. too much amateur still. So I had to sort of uh, learn to adapt that style and, and get and just relax a little bit more and keep your head out of it, you know. Yeah. Because uh, and and then I sort of started getting through a few without cuts, you know. Well, you won the uh, Queensland state title a couple of fights after that, and then you ran into I didn't actually know this. You fought him, Stefan Scriggins, who is obviously in amateur Rick circles, Scrigo. was one of our yep. best ever amateur fighters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, um, and and that again too, fighting Scriggo. Um, I, I was going good, you know. We we really backed what we, what we were doing, but um, Scrigo, you know, he's very confident, mm. and he come down, you know, very cocky, and and you know, like he um, we end up having a bit of a bit of a scrap, scr like a wrestle and thing there. And, Did you actually fight him in the amateurs or not? No, no, I didn't. No, okay. we, we were um, well. I, I was sort of at those ages. I was still doing my apprenticeship, you know. So I'd be yeah. fighting. And it was never, I never got any consistency there. I, you know, mm. you sort of was always pretty hard. Yeah. So he, he was sort of going then. Um, but I, um, when, when we fought him, you know, he's a six foot southpaw, you know. <laughs> you, you're not going to win the first few rounds with a bloke no. like that. Which you is know? why he's a good amateur. And, I, and we, yeah, we knew that. We knew that. So he, he was sort of ahead on the points, but, um, you know, we, we just sort of had a game plan that we're just going to get short in the distance on him and yeah. start putting the pressure on him. And then, um, we, we, you know, I got him a couple of good shots and he ended up falling out of the ring. And I got back in, he pushed me through, and I, I got back in, he didn't come back in. So, yeah. And that's that was the way. So it was, a, it was a bugger of the way it finished. But, um, you know, I still thought I would have I beat him on the mm. night. 
Yeah, no, he was a good fighter. And then a few fights down the yeah. track, you probably had, like, what I would look at as one of your best wins, a 12-round decision over Sean Sullivan, who's a bloody tough, tough fighter. Yeah, yeah. And, and that fight, that was another ripper too, because I, I thought I was going to knock him out, you know. I, I actually didn't read his, his record too good, did I? Because well, uh, he, he, he has got a granite chin, one of the toughest guys I've ever met, ever. And I, I come out and just loaded up on everything early, and uh, I think I won the first six easy. And then after that, I was gone. I'm mm. gassed, you know. <laughs> That's 12 rounds uh, too. To just get, yeah, just had to get through it. But, um, you know, it, it was a great, it was a good fight. And I, they, you know, they used to throw the money in the ring, the showers. Yeah. And um, they threw about a grand in that night, you know, <laughs> um, in, into the ring. That was, They loved the fight that much. Yeah, because he had some wars, didn't he, with some, some uh, other Aussie fighters. Uh, oh, Sean. he's been around, been, yeah. yeah. Even Danny Green and Mundine at, yeah. like, at their way. Yeah. And here I'm thinking I'm going to knock him out of well. Right away. <laughs> no so, yeah. uh, was it four fights later, you suffered your first defeat against Ian McLeod. I remember watching yeah. that one. Um, you looked yeah. really yeah. flat in that yeah. fight. And I know, I think we'd been to Spar Ian a few times, so I was really surprised that he got, he yeah. got you on that one. Yeah, well, yeah, I was, I was, I went down to work with um, Hyder down there, and we were sort of, you know, I suppose training wasn't that good. Mm. I, like, I, I struggled to make light middle. That shows you how fat I was, you know, yeah. so... Well, you weighed 153, um, nearly just under 154, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, and struggled to make it. So mm. that shows the work I was doing. Yeah. So I, I didn't, you know, obviously things, that, you know, they got me at the right time, I feel. Um, and, you know, you just got to take them on the chin. Mm. That's that's basically that, you know. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, so... And he was a cagey was fighter. Fun. He was a really cagey fighter. Yeah, yeah, a lot of... A lot of, lot of, in the fight, I remember a lot of claiming, a lot of head clashes, like I, yeah. I, I got cut over both eyes. Mm. I still thought I won the fight, yeah. um, but it was, you know, it was a shit fight. It was, mm. it was a fight I didn't really like, you know. Well, after that, you, you had your first American fight, Willie Wise. So yep. that was yep. that, um, in Atlantic City. That yep. must have been quite an experience. And that was a good experience, but it was it was pretty hard. It was rushed. We, we got there... We got there a day before the weigh-in, you know, like, mm. so then I had to make weight and then straight away, I've like, by the time we fought, I was asleep, I reckon. Yeah. And, you know, well, it normally it was, takes a couple uh, of days to adjust us to the time difference, doesn't it? Let alone jump in there and fight. hundred percent. We were straight there. Yeah, it was a bit rushed and to fight someone like him, um, mm. yeah, like he was a quite, slick, quite a slick boxer. Yeah. I, knew, I caught him with a couple of real good shots. Thought he was going to, you know, like his eyes started rolling. I thought, oh, this is it. But um, opened up and he gave me a bit of a boxing lesson after that. Yeah, mm. uh, and then I see you've had three, uh, four more fights, including a couple of good wins. Stephen and Marks, Josh Clinshaw are obviously tough boys as well. Yeah. And then, yeah. but then probably the, the crowning achievement in your career, mate, Shannon uh, Taylor. I remember watching yeah, that yeah. one as well. That was eventful as well. Just as you're talking about that, mate, I'm going to actually put it on. Excuse the, um, the uh, footage here. Someone's obviously taped it on the TV or something, but... What are your thoughts uh, on this? Well, that that was at that point with with Shannon, we just um, we didn't want to get hit early from him, you know. So um, up to that point, I was just boxing and boxing nice with him, and then I got that head clash, and and basically our game plan was to start really really punching after he, after that, that that after the sixth round, you know. Yeah. So when, when I got the head clash, we just said, right, hey, we're going to start going. How did the fight come about, mate? Because I think there was talk, you, you actually goaded him into the fight, didn't you? You were always at him about fighting, and um, I remember him, he stormed yeah. into the ring, he meant business, and probably worked in your favour yeah. in the end. Yeah, well, not, well, not, well, not really. Like, we just, um, you know, like, it, we sort of, the fight was always going around, and we were trying to get it, like, come to a, a you know, like, a, an agreement, I suppose. And, and it wasn't until... I was sort of getting a little bit bewildered to where yeah, I was right going, hand. and then Daniel, the bloke Daniel Rouse, rung me up and said, um, "Oh, you know Daniel," and yeah. he said, "Oh, well, um, you know, uh, will, you, will you fight Taylor?" And, I, and I'll, we'll get, you know, because he knew the, the promoter, and we'll give you this much money. And I just said, "Yep," because that's what I needed. I needed that fight, you know, yeah. and and wanted it. I suppose it wasn't about anything else. I just wanted mm. to fight Shannon Taylor. Well, this is only a couple of fights, I think, after he fought uh, Mosley too, wasn't it? Yeah, no, it's his next one, yeah. 
Yeah, because yeah, I remember I remember him saying before, it was either before I think it was beforehand, beforehand they did the uh, interview and yeah. he said I'm sick of this guy I'm going to shut him up I'm going to do this and that and that and he charged yeah. into the ring yeah. and he foamed yeah. at the yeah. mouth and um, who who yeah. know that the, the fight in Farrier had uh, met him there and, and sent him on yeah. his way it was a, it was an awesome night I remember watching on um, on Fox Sports Live and I remember and, and you I'm, know uh, jumping yeah. around the lounge it was a great great fight. And I would have liked, you know what, I would have liked another one as well. Like, yeah. you know, a, a two. And I went up there and he wasn't ready to fight. And then he challenged me and I was I was back working, Farian, and like had retired from boxing yeah. sort of thing. So I never really eventuated, but it would have been good if we had him, yeah. I reckon. Yeah. You know, just to sort of even it up. And I think um, from memory, talking to some of the people that there, it was a little bit eventful afterwards. Not many people up there liked the fact you, you got there, boy. Yeah, oh yeah, there was a couple of people a bit, gra- uh, a bit cranky with it, I think. They might have had the money on us, I'd say. <laughs> well, knowing the, uh, the Holland uh, clan, mate, and the crew, I've, I've got a uh, feeling you, you didn't take one step backwards anyway, even though you're in, you're in um, hostile territory up there. We were we were in very hostile territory. We had to sort of we had to uh, do the right thing. I think yeah, yeah. It, was, uh, it was getting a bit hairy. I bet it was. Now, you only had the, the three fights after that. You ended your career in 2002 with a, a knockout win over uh, Zolkif uh, Joy Ali. That was yeah. in, in Melbourne, yeah. the Festival Hall as well. So yeah. not a bad way, yeah. way to go yeah. out. Was it something that you? Well, that, yeah. So go ahead, mate. Well, that wasn't it. Wasn't planned that. Um, I just remembered that night. There was, there was, you know, a lot going on, and of my family and everything like that. And I, I sort of went. I, I remember walking into the ring, and I was like, I don't want to be here. Mm. You know, you know what I mean. And I've Comes never quick. been that way. And then that mm. was, that was the, um, that was when I, I uh, sort of decided to sort of give it up for a while. And lucky, I got back into my trade as a farrier, yeah. and um, which I still do now. And I, I sort of become. I become too busy, uh, like really quick, mm. and to, to sort of ever go back to box. You know, go back yeah. and have another couple of fights. Sometimes I wish I had them. Yeah. Um, well, you're how always old were you? thinking maybe wish I. Sort of been in 30. your 20, 30, Okay. Thirty yeah. when I retired. Yeah. Yeah. Which is still young, you know, and the way we live now and the way we do things, you know. Yeah. No. Exactly. So just tell us about the the farrier, mate. As I said before, the fighting farrier. Um, yeah. How did you get into that? And 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 you're still in it after all these years. Yeah, yeah, well, I left school to be a farrier, and um, it was always good for me with um, with my, you know, like when I was boxing, because I could sort of have a little bit of time off when I needed it, all that yeah. sort of thing. But, um, you know, it's a hard job too, though, you know, so mm. it's, it's a little bit unforgiving, the job. Um, yeah. you just got to keep whacking away at it. You've got to like horses, mm. and I, I love racing, and that's what keeps me in it, you know, so... It was two years after I retired, I shot Maccabi Diva for the first Melbourne Cup. Wow. Which man. was, um, which, you know what, that was, the pressure going into that was as big as the fight, like Taylor fight and that. It yeah. was huge. You know, like, because every time you're nailing a nail, they're, they're watching you. <laughs> you know, like, don't bugger this well, up, you must mate. have done a good job anyway, mate. Yeah, yeah, oh, she's a good horse. Uh, I think a... anyone would choose that one to win. Now, the family life, mate, you're obviously happily married and you've got the two boys and uh, I've seen both yep. boys on social media and I've just got to say, very, very lucky that they take from mum's side. <laughs> <laughs> they, everyone says that, yeah. A couple of good-looking roosters. <laughs> I think one of them's a model, is yeah. that right? Oh, no, he's, he's, a, he's, he's been doing acting and all that. And, uh, oh, an actor, sorry. Yeah. It's, been, it's been a bit tough through the, um, through the COVID because everyone's been locked down to sort of get out, but he, yeah. he, he wants to and... He's been studying law and business commerce, and now Jeez. the bloke he's doing architecture, uh, yeah. no, and um, and building construction. Yeah, yeah, awesome. So the, both the boys are at uni, and uh, they're going good. They're going good. And, and yeah. neither one of them ever expressed interest in getting into the, the fight game, mate. I, I tell you what, they they can both. They're both pretty good athletes, and if they wanted to, they'd be all right at it. Yeah. Um, because they train with me, and they they can throw them good. But, you know, I, I've sort of said, look, it's a hard go. <laughs> it's a hard go. Just well, you've done the right thing, training. mate. I've sort of done the same yeah, thing yeah. with my kids. Go and do something else. Yeah. You don't want the fight. And I didn't actually yeah, well, turn you know, pro. I was but a like, the, As I say, the fight game is like barium. What I do mm. is it, I tell the young kids, because, you know, with people in the horse industry, they go, oh, farrying's a good job. 
you've got to want to do it like mm. boxing. Yeah. Otherwise, it'll break you, you know. Yeah. And, well, you it's know, one of those we, things. And we love, we, mm. yeah. I was just going to say, mate, it's one of those things where you're all in or you're all out, isn't it? And, and, yes, 100%. And the feeling you had 100%. was a similar one to me after, I think it was the Commonwealth Games in 98. And probably, I was a bit different as well. I, had, I was about to get married and go into business. I had a, a, a couple of things to fill that void of, you know, that competitiveness yeah. that you, you have when you're, when you're fighting. Yeah. But same thing as you, mate. When you go in the gym and you're like, yeah, I just, I'm just not feeling it. So, um, you know, I would have loved yeah. to have turned pro as well, but... Mate, especially pro versus amateur, yeah. it's even it's even more important to be more all in, isn't it? Yeah, 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 hundred percent, hundred percent. Like uh, the biggest thing, the biggest thing I learned was when I come down and train with Jeff Fennick in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. um, it was when he fought Philip Holiday. Yeah. And I, I was I was five and zero, I think, as a pro, going okay. And I got in there and I was that unfit, that <laughs> shit house, and just so far from the mark yeah. that I, I really shocked me. And I went, "Wow, I've got to, I've got to change everything around here," mm -hmm. you know. And I'm, I'm really thankful that I got that opportunity to actually see that. A, a lot of kids don't, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah, no, you're and, right. And um, yeah. Yeah. So a bit about the these days, mate. You're, you're obviously you got involved as a trainer at one stage. Is that right? Yeah, I well, I've trained a couple of kids, Kane Watson, a few yeah. amateurs, and all that. But you know, honestly, mate, I don't get the same thrill out of training mm. boys as I did fighting. So yeah. I've sort of put it put it on the bench. Um, mm. It's a lot of time. Um, takes up a lot of time. You've just got to love it. As I say, you've got to love it. You know. Yeah. So I'll, I'll always be involved. I go to the fights all the time. Yeah. Try and do a bit of commentary here every now and then. And um, yeah, but uh, like I'll always be around the, the sport because mm. you know I love it obviously. But um, yeah, it's it's pretty hard when you if you're training and you all those hours, you know. Yeah, I must admit I had a stint as a as an amateur trainer for a couple of years, and it's, it's tough work even with amateur training, let alone yeah. with the pros. Yeah. So mate, just just with a uh, these days in the boxing scene, do you take much notice? I know you just said you you go to the Australian stuff. Do you take much interest in the stuff overseas, or is it mainly just Australia? Yeah, mainly just Australia, just the yeah. local scene. You know, yeah. yeah. I'm sort of, yeah, well, it was pretty good the other day, though, wasn't it, on Sunday? Yeah. In the first yeah. round, I've nearly done my hammy jumping up when he, <laughs> <laughs> when he hit him with that bolo. He was, oh, Georgie, I, just, I, I, I think, couldn't um, believe it. I think everyone watched was in the same boat, mate. Was obviously talking about George Cambosis, and, and mate, what a yeah. what a unbelievable performance. And it's probably a little bit like the Jeff Horn fight four years ago. The the extent yeah. of the benefit to Australian boxing that's going to do. How many Aussie uh, young kids out there at the moment are saying, "I want to be like this guy," yeah. just like they were when well, Jeff Horn and, beat Pacquiao? He, the thing is with George is he's done it on his own, which mm. I like. You know, yeah. he's um, he hasn't had to go around with the big teams and that. He's just gone right. Oh, this is me. He said what he was going to do, and he did it. He executed. That's why I take my hat off to him. I think he's a legend. You know. Yeah, he is. Yeah. And what about the rest of the? And the um... other bloke. The other bloke. The other bloke's just a bloody tool. You know, he's good fighter. Good fighter. But um, mm. you know what? I think George got into his head so much he he lost. He left his game plan back in the train room, so he had no game plan. Nothing in his just didn't, didn't look like it did yeah, it, was, it was like that, wasn't it? Because I think I, I commented on one of our shows in the lead-up to it that George, from the word go, he got right in his face. He wouldn't take a backward step. Yeah. He stared straight yeah. in his eyes. And you can see the look in yeah. T.F. T. Lopez's Lopez's um, um, face. Who, who is this guy? You know I mean, he was right yeah, in his yeah. face. Yeah. And, and you can't teach yeah. that. George has got that no. swagger about him that yeah. you can't teach. And he, he obviously backed it up. He reminds me a little bit of Robbie Peden, doesn't he? Yeah, he probably does, actually. <laughs> He's an angry little bastard. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Uh, yeah. No, that's great, mate. What about the rest of the uh, the Aussie scene at the moment? Any Anyone you you, know, you sort of got your eye on um, out there? or? Um, look, there's some good boys. There's good bo like the good boys in Queensland at the moment, aren't they? You know? yeah. So, yeah, like yeah, you've, no, you've that's definitely got all uh, Ben Mahoney, I think, is a good fighter. Yeah, so I'm looking like forward to seeing... Um, Elaine Wilson, uh, Sam Goodmans, what do you think of these types of guys? Yeah, yeah, I, and I'm, my Justice Hooney's yep. the one I'm sort of really... I, I just think he's fantastic, you know, mm. doing, doing the right thing. Yep. Shame that he broke his hand on Gallon's head, um, which, mm. you know, he was always going to, wasn't he? Mm. Yeah. I, I keep telling... I keep telling people, they all go, oh, you reckon he'll beat him? I'm like, you kidding me or what? <laughs> 
You've got, oh, it's all you've got a draft horse to get. You've got a draft horse racing against the racehorse, mate. Yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah, but yeah. they sold it pretty well, didn't they, for the pay per views? That's all yeah. that matters these days. They did. Isn't it? They did. Yeah. 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 No, that's great, mate. Well, I'm going to let you go. You looks like you've got a bit on there uh, at, at work today, yeah. but mate, I've been wanting to interview you for a while. I really appreciate you coming on, and uh, it's been a pleasure to catch up with you after uh, uh, quite a while. No worries, Lyndon. Thanks for being. Thanks for having me on, and. Um, Looking forward to, uh, the, we've, we've sort of um, bought a place down near, near Brian. Oh, down in, uh, oh Brian Butler, yep, yeah. Yep. So I'll be seeing Brian Butler on the weekend, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to get Brian on at some Which stage as well. I'm sure he's got lots of stories. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. mate, really appreciate it again. Yeah. And uh, thanks again for taking time out of your day. 100%, mate. See you, buddy. See you, mate. Bye, mate.